What's up everybody, a Sparrow with a Gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Engineer's Inspiration series. And we're starting things off today with the Hugo. It's a cute little ship. I like it. Um, it's primarily designed as a research ship. Wait a minute, did that just try and shoot at me? I'm triggering a sensor somewhere. Maybe not. <laughs> I thought I heard the Gatling gun go off a couple times, but maybe not. So it is a little interesting that they have LCD screens on the side of the ship. I guess that's for if you were like on a planet doing research, because it is a research ship. You could just look and see how much power the reactors had and batteries and all that kind of crap. So that's kind of cool. Um, obviously being a research ship as an observation ship as well, you're not going to have a ton of firepower and stuff, but you do have a couple little turrets for defense and stuff like that. So that's still kind of the bare minimum, I suppose. Overall, I really like the design, though. I thought it was a cool... It kind of has this compartmentalized bubble kind of thing with this outer... Uh, almost looks like an outer ring with an inner ring kind of... Th or an inner bubble type of thing. So I just like little things like that that are just kind of cool. Um, no, I don't need a door timer. I have the door right here. Um, one thing is supposedly, I don't think it works for the doors, unless I'm just doing it wrong, probably am. Interior lights, corner lights, sliding doors, so I probably did screw something up. Um, but it has a lot of sensor setups to where when you're not around, it will turn off the lights and screens and things, and I thought that was kind of cool. Right exit has the timestamp over there. This was also something I thought was kind of different. They have a floor map, which is kind of cool. Like, instead of having a screen with your blueprint thing, it's on, a, on the floor. And I just realized something. It looks like... Oh! Is it tracking my position? How is it doing that? Oh my. I have got to tear apart that code. I gotta see how that works. Oh! <gasps> That's awesome! I know, I'm freaking out more about the code of a script than I am the actual ship, but you know me, I'm a programmer, it's what I do. I freak out over code. Um, mainly because some of that stuff I didn't think you could do, but I, I really want to dig into these mapping scripts and stuff because um, I've always wanted to do a kind of thing like that where you could tear it apart and figure out how many blocks you had and yada 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 yada. Um, so yeah, that's really cool. I really like that it can keep track of you. I wonder if that works in multiplayer as well. Like, you, you get a different color for different players, maybe? Uh, we got a full block count here. What? Yeah, see, I really want to do that. Now, I will say this. This is modless. And modless makes things easier because you have a basically a finite amount of blocks and components based on just the vanilla build of the game. If you're dealing with mods like I usually do, that could be a little bit more complicated. Because you probably would end up having to add new components and other things uh, to account for it. And that can be very tedious and time-consuming if you're using a ton of mods. So, that's probably why it's able to do that, where I never could figure out how to do that, because I was usually trying to incorporate mods into mine. But still, it's really awesome. There's a lot of scripts running, it seems, or at least a couple of really awesome ones. Like the, probably the adjustable LCD screens and the damage map and all that kind of stuff. Um, also, there's a, I don't know what ground, I don't know what some of these readouts are for, other than maybe like GPS distance, stuff like that. More reactors, but I do like, I really like the, um, the glass look to this ship that it's, again, it's kind of a research and observatory type design. Um, so I like that it has a lot of view, basically. I thought you could get up here, though. Is this not a normal thing you can get to? It looks like the oxygen generators and stuff. No, I don't think you're supposed to be able to get up here normally as far as without a... Um, without a jetpack. 
And I also don't see... It's possible that I'm just not seeing it correctly, but I don't see the LCD screens and stuff turning off and on when you're at certain distances. But that might mean, like, away from the ship. I'm not really sure. It wasn't all too clear on that point. Uh, let's see. I guess there's no upper floor. I wasn't sure if this was one of those where you had a gravity wrap around type thing, but I don't think there is. But I do like this open bridge. This is really, really cool looking. And a lot of information. So this would be a really good exploration and science ship because you have a, a wide range of view. You can see a lot of what's going on and where you are. Um, and there's a lot of information, clearly. I mean, there's LCD panels all over this thing. Now, some of it looks just at a glance. I'm not really looking at every little thing, but some of it looks like repetitive information just for different stations to look at. But still, there's a lot of info going around. And I really, really like this script. Anyways, I think that's going to do it for this one, so let's move on to the next one. Alright, so next up we have the Caroline, a solar energy sailing ship. This one's really, really cool looking to me, because I myself have even done um, an attempt, a very bad attempt, at a solar, or not solar, but a, um, a sailing ship in the Space Engineers kind of setup. But this one is really, really cool looking. I will say it has definitely come a long way since when I was trying to do sailing ships with the vanilla, with just the straight blocks. Like they've added quite a few more blocks to work with, but overall, I really like this attempt. This is really really cool. Um, it even keeps I don't know all of the ship jargon, um, so I probably am butchering terminologies and stuff. But I forget what this is under the under the bottom of the hull, but I really like that attention to detail that they kept that in there. And that the sails are solar panels. That's really cool. I really like that idea. I hadn't even thought of that when I did mine. Um, though, they must have changed the vanilla solar panels because these don't look right, but yet it said it was completely modless, so I guess they're... I guess that's part of the new model blocks, and I just didn't realize that they changed them like that. That's really cool. And it looks like they used a combination of rotors and stuff to angle them, and there's probably one right there. Yep, there it is. So they're using rotors to angle it so that they can have the sails tilted. That's really cool. I like that effect. We've got Gatling turrets, missile turrets, and atmospheric thrusters, which would be good for if you're transitioning between a planet or not. Connectors for the cargo bay, that looks like batteries? Or jump drives, I think it's batteries. And merge blocks for your boarding parties, of course. Now, one thing I always liked is some of the gimmicky stuff, so it would have been really cool to see like a merge block on a piston or something to where it's like walk the plank kind of thing that would be cool it definitely def uh, it definitely 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 has quite a good broadside setup though with the gatling the fixed gatlings and rockets i would not want to get broadsided by that but overall i mean weapons it actually does look very like compatible if you wanted to run it in a survival world and actually use the ship it looks very functional to me just based on appearances and stuff. But overall, I really like the look. The sail design and stuff like that. It's really cool. It's a very good job. And I like the little details, like stuff like this, where there's the extra little fins and things. Uh, the antenna is basically the crow's nest. That's really neat. I like this. And the extra um, Atmo thrusters there is cool. Now, does it have an interior? I think that's, um, okay, so that's a regular cockpit for a small ship, but I don't know if there's, like, a cargo hold or anything. It looks like there is, but that may just be for functionality, not for, you You might not are supposed to be able to get down in here. That's kind of what I'm seeing. It looks uninhabitable, it's just there for the function of the ship overall, I think. Could be wrong, but that's what I think. But yeah, I really, really like this. This is really cool. 
I like the design and stuff. There's a lot of little, little details that make it kind of work and it just, at a distance and stuff, it doesn't look weird or disproportionate or anything like that. It just actually works. So that's pretty cool. There are probably like too, too many antennas on here, but that's just, <laughs> I mean, that was probably more for design and stuff. Oh, and there's spotlights. That's pretty cool. So there's spotlights for your cannons and weapons. I mean turrets. <clears throat> not, it's totally not pirate cannons. Now, one thing, I don't know why there's merge blocks back here. Not really sure what purpose that would serve. Oh, that's cool. So we've got information readouts right at your fingertips. That's pretty cool. Oh, okay. That's that's an interesting thing that should be noted by the looks of things, unless I'm doing something completely wrong. Not out of the question. I think this might be a purely Atmo ship. I did not realize this. But now that I'm looking at it, I don't see anything beyond the atmospheric thrusters. So, yeah, I don't think yeah, this might actually be an atmospheric ship, because I don't see any ion thrusters anywhere. So that's something very important to note. Um, if you wanted to use it, that it does seem, unless I'm missing something, which is not out of the question, um, it does seem like you're restricted to on an atmosphere planet type system. So bear that in mind. But overall, I just really like the look of it and stuff. It looked really cool. I've seen a lot of ships and things, but I like the... There's a few of them that just kind of look more polished and well done than others, so I just really like this one. Anyways, that's going to do it for this one. Let's move on to the last one. Alright, so last but not least, we have the Androma Class C Freighter. Now, this thing is actually pretty cool looking, and I wanted to take some extra time with it to kind of poke around and experiment a little bit, because... One of the things that I think is neat, I love these, I call them Jedi Starfighter type things because it's one of the first places in my memory that I remember seeing it, but I love these ships that have like a upgraded docking type thing that then lets them jump further and stuff like that, which is kind of what this has. It has a, oh gosh, I, I, I am going to get it wrong, so definitely read the description for the right way to say this, but it's something like the Delta Jump ring something I don't know uh, but you can see right about here there's a connection port there and I imagine there's merge blocks around here somewhere but I could be wrong it might be done purely through connectors I don't actually see anything else holding it in place so perhaps it's done purely on that one connector interesting I would have thought there would have been a merge lock or landing gear or something else to kind of hold it in place, but I guess it's... I mean, there are merge blocks, they're just not used, so... I don't know. But anyways, it's got three cargo containers on the extra ring here, as well as a lot of other bits and bobs, like jump drives and solar panels and reactors and antennas and partridge in a pear tree. So that's pretty cool. The real ship is the center point here beneath the other connector part. It's the center section. And I like these detachable things where you leave this in orbit and then you pick it up when you want it. I just think that's really cool. It's it's just kind of different and fun. Um, primarily, this is designed to be a freighter, I believe. Hence the name, freighter. Um, <laughs> dur -dur -dur. So, anyways... So it's primarily a cargo ship kind of thing and transport and all that stuff, so I wouldn't expect it to be, like, um, real heavy in terms of dogfighting and all this kind of stuff. Now, this is kind of interesting. I guess this is built on a small ship grid. I guess it is. Okay. When you're not in third person, the ship actually looks pretty big. So I was actually expecting it to have, like, um... I don't know if it has an interior or not, now that I'm thinking about it. That's hydro... Okay, so that's storage stuff. I don't think that it does. I thought it was a large ship. Um, I didn't actually know it was built on a small ship grid. 
So I was actually expecting there to be like an interior and stuff. Though, to be fair, I don't remember any screenshots showing a interior, so that's probably my bad for assuming. We all know what assuming does. So, yeah. Overall, though, I really like the look of it, too. I, I like the design and stuff of it. I just thought the mechanics and features were pretty cool, too. So, let's get in here and start poking around. We have the damage readout script. I don't know what that one is on the top left. I'm not familiar with that one. That could be a radar or something to that effect. Um, we have the GPS and damage block indicator, cargo, it looks like hydrogen tank, and then you can see some of the reactors and things. Okay, so let's take a look at the tabs. We have cameras all over the place, landing gears. Uh, we do have Gatling guns somewhere. Antennas, beacons, uh, that's probably the main connector, I'm guessing. Decoys, merge blocks, uh, hydrogen thruster controls, atmosphere thruster controls, and ion. It, it can do atmosphere um, or space, and it can transition between both. However, they do recommend you not do... Uh, don't land in an atmosphere with gravity, um, like a main planet. Uh, if you're full, if you have a full cargo load, there, I think they said that you won't be able to lift back off or something like that. Also, it's it's very highly not recommended. It's very discouraged to bring the attached jump ring with you to the planet. Um, that's kind of one of those. I, it's it's kind of like uncharted waters type of thing. Probably shouldn't do that. Um, we have. A, uh, that's the ejectors for the connectors, hydrogen tanks, projector for repairs, air vents, oxygen generators, oxygen tanks, detectors, gyroscopes, batteries, lots of stuff here. Uh, programmable block liftoff, obviously I won't really be messing with that since we don't have a planet. Stop liftoff, start, silent mode, um, jump drive, activate scripts, so... That we should probably do... I don't know, though, because it looks like it's all running, but we're going to click it anyway. Okay, so now I guess they're running, maybe. I don't really know what that one does. Oh, it just said booting up. Verifying connectors. Okay, so it's... That's something you could do... Oh, well, I guess it's configurable LCDs. Um, that's something you could... You probably have to do on, like, a multiplayer server or something to that effect. All right, so... Right now, we have cameras for all over the place. Ooh, a connection camera. That'll be useful. Thrusters. No natural gravity. Oh, that's a neat idea, is putting a camera in front of a random LCD screen so that you have more inputs. That's pretty cool. I like that. Okay, so from right here, you can fly around like normal and everything. I mean, it's basically just an upgrade ring. It's not really like it's going to limit your movement. I mean, it might not turn as well or whatever. And the added solar panels will no doubt give you more power, so that's all pretty cool. Let's see how well she stops. Pretty good. I like it. So from this point, if we wanted to detach it, I think... We would go to tab 2 and hit 7. Okay. And it turned yellow, so we're now detached. And then we can basically move away. So this is the actual main ship right here. Um, the rest of that is your docking ring. So I like that, though. I think it's really cool how you can fly up underneath of it and dock to it and stuff. It's got the pulsing lights and everything. I really think it's cool. I like it. I like stuff like that that has little... I don't know. I, I, some, some would call them gimmicky, but I, I think it's just more unique. It's just something unorthodox and, and cool. Um, we got three programmable blocks there, probably in charge of running the scripts. I would imagine. But overall, I like both, of the, both the ship and the, the ring. I like both of their designs. They're pretty cool looking. Uh, where are these weapons, though? Because I honestly did not see any. 
Okay, there's one. Are they on both sides? Oh, they are. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So you have a little bit of defense. Though, if I were running on, like, a survival world or some or a multiplayer where you have potential to be attacked or something, I would probably recommend an escort. But... Are my dampeners... Oh, they are on. Okay. So, yeah, and then, if I can do this correctly... That's highly debatable. Let's see if we can dock it again. Just gonna kinda coast. Let it coast for a minute. It does have a little bit, especially without the ring. Um, there is a little bit of a slow deceleration time. So you'd have to be mindful of that. It doesn't stop on a dime. I think the added thrusters that the ring brings with it will is what was improving that before. Because it seemed to stop a little bit better when we were attached to the ring. Alright, so from this point, right about there, and... snap it. And then we're back. Awesome. So yeah, that's really, really cool. I like it. On that note, I think we're going to wrap things up here for this episode. In the meantime, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.